Um, well, I'm so happy to be moderating because I am Jessica's number one fan in a, in a creepy way. Number two, Mom. You're number one. Oh, Mom. Um, <laughs> number two. Yeah, number two. And uh, I was just going to tell briefly the story of how I met Jessica because it's also sort of the story of how I got in the business. And then we're going to ask maybe one quick question of the general questions. <laughs> then we're going to launch in to some really exciting stuff. Um, I met Jessica, I was an assistant working for Al Goff and Miles Miller, who were the showrunners of Smallville, and I met her through a friend of a friend who also was her agent, and she was looking for a baby writer to sort of shepherd through the process of writing this screenplay, uh, which turned out to be The Wedding Date. It's called Something Borrowed before the title got changed, and it got turned into sort of a wonky movie, but... <laughs> it, um, it's an awesome <laughs> script. You should read the coverage from Fox, if you really... Don't read the reviews. Just read the Fox coverage. Yeah, don't, don't, don't bother reading the script. Or yeah. the script. Don't it's read the really script. Good. Just read the coverage. It's way better than the script. Um, so anyway, I met Jessica, and I uh, my dark, dark secret was that I actually did not have a sample. I had never written anything. So True story. <laughs> short film from USC, that's it. So I had a 15-page short film. I was at USC Film School for a couple of years in the producing program, and I had a little 15-page short film and no sample. And so I met her, and the whole time I was like, please, God, don't ask me for my sample, because <laughs> I don't have a sample. So we talked about the idea for the movie, and Jessica was amazing, and she was instantly a mentor, and she was so great to me and actually really believed in just my ideas and actually thought that I was a writer just from talking to me, which I really appreciated since I'd never actually written anything. <laughs> so uh, she convinced the other producers that I could do it, and she actually helped me get this job to write this movie. And throughout the whole process, I never stopped learning from her till the bitter end, and I'm still learning from her, so I actually have my notepad, and if I take notes, I hope that's not going to be awkward for you guys. <laughs> I still really want to know stuff from her. So, you know, she told me so many great things, including, um, you know, I was always really scared of plot, because, you know, everyone says, you know, plot, structure, and I thought, oh, I'm so bad at that, I'm so bad at that. It's, you know, sort of like, girls are bad at math, I'm bad at structure. Um, so she kept saying, you know, plot is actually character, it's not structure it's actually character and so things like that and she also taught me three bad pages a day which was actually saved my life it was just like just if you can write three bad pages a day then you'll get something done and it'll be great so these and many other topics we will discuss tonight. <laughs> but um, I want to now put it over to Jessica you guys have her bio I think so we're not going to necessarily talk about all her credits but I just wanted her to give you a quick sort of uh, story of how she got in the business oh well thank you Jaina for that lovely introduction <laughs> um, God, uh, the long story short, it's a long, torturous, arduous story about how I got in the business, but I'll give you the long story short. It involves a couch and dirty things. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be, yeah. Yeah, that, not Get that ready. version, Dana. <laughs> That's the for friends only version. Oh, God. I can't take her anywhere. Um, it's, uh, I was uh, writing, where, 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 how did I get in this business? I started as an intern at Spin Magazine when I was in college, and so I, I think I'm a stand-up comic. I just want to hold the mic. Um, <laughs> I, uh, what was, blah, blah. I, I worked as an intern at Spin Magazine. They were understaffed. There was a new music on the horizon called Hip Hop. And none of the other people there wanted to cover it. I was obsessed with a band called Public Enemy. They needed a Public Enemy interview. I did the Public Enemy interview. Uh, white girl going to Columbia, interviewing PE. <laughs> I don't know how it happened, but I'm glad it did. Um, I don't know, for those of you who don't know Public Enemy, they were the East Coast version of NWA which stands for N-word with attitude. I won't even say the N-word. I'm just going to say that's what it means. And, um, you know, Ch Flava Flav and Chuck D were very militant um, uh, young men. And uh, I gave a great interview. And, and Ch Chuck, I mean, I didn't give a great interview. They gave a great interview. Um, I basically didn't edit what they said. And all their other interviews had been taken out of context. And people had taken their quotes about Nation of Islam and done really controversial pieces. And I just let the words speak for themselves. And they loved the article. And Russell Simmons at Def Jam said, Jessica is the only writer it's been who can do Def Jam artists. So I started getting these interviews with artists, other hip hop artists, Salt and Peppa, and uh, a bunch of bands. Anyway, long story short, I had some clips before I graduated, which I know is really obnoxious. And most people don't get that. And so I, I recognize that that's uh, obnoxious. But I did. I have my clips. And I started writing for MTV News pretty shortly thereafter, making like $90, uh, $90 a day did you ever meet writing Kurt for Kurt Loder. Loder. I met Kurt Loder. <laughs> I wrote telescripts like, you know, The Poison Record, Coming to Stores Near You, you know, really banal, bad scripts. But it was MTV. It was a cool job. I learned a lot. 
And I still, I wrote for pharmaceutical companies. I did any gig I could to keep writing. I did lots of technical writing and PR writing and just crappy crap. Liquor, liquor, you know, the Tangare gin and tonic US tour. Like I would write stuff for the salespeople to say as they went around the country trying to sell gin. I did it all. Um, and the, in fact, two, two or three years before I sold Bring It On as a pitch, I made $5,000 that year and was living in New York. I don't know how I did it. It's just like, you know, I, I struggled. I made no money. I was broke. I was talking about coupons with my friends this morning. I was like the master Ralph's coupons cutter. Anyway, I uh, had met a guy in New York who'd written a, there was a John, I can't remember the name of the show. It was that John Lorquette show way back in the day. Was it the John Lorquette show? Yeah. He'd written a spec. And I was the only one who had it agent hip pocketed. And so he gave me a spec to read. And it was really bad. And this is a lesson for everybody. Um, it was really, 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 really bad. And I thought, oh, you know, pew, I've got to put this down. I thought, no, 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 wait. Be kind. Do the right thing. Read it. Give him notes. Go through it. Let's hang out with this guy. And I spent like two or three hours with him going over a script. Cut to three, four months later, he calls me, hey, Jessica, I sold a show in France. Do you want to come work over in France for a couple months? We, I think I sold 21 episodes, and I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> and I was like, I don't either. Sure, I'll come over. So I flew to France, and I worked on this show. It's still on the air. It's called Sous le Soleil. And it's like, it's the worst. It's like Mel's Place meets Beverly Hills 90210 meets Baywatch set in San Tropez. <laughs> and it's really schlocky, but I worked on the first season of that show, and I'm a member of the French Writers Guild. I was a member of the SACD before the WGA, I'd like to say. I still get my checks for 39 cents for my episode. Um, so I worked on that show, and I came back, and I was like, oh, I have 230-odd produced pages. And I was like, to this agent, and was, hey, I have all these French. And they were like, yeah, we don't care. French TV, like, yeah, <laughs> hit the road. So I thought, OK, I'll write, um, I'll write a spec. And I wrote a, a spec script. And I make these deals kind of with the universe. And I, my deal went something like, OK, I'm going to write a script. And it's going to be so me that if it gets rejected, I'll know I'm not meant to be in the business. And I wrote a spec called Hit Girl. And it was a dark comedy about a female hit woman. Um, just in time for the long kiss goodnight to come out, I might add. I was not reading the trades at that time. I still don't. Uh, a little guy named Shane Black had written it and sold it for a lot of money. But clearly, I didn't know about that. So I, the, the spec goes out, and people are like, yeah, Gina Davis movie opening any day now? Don't think so. So everybody passed. And I thought, oh, that's it. I've made my deal with the universe. I will not write anymore. Um, and uh, my agent said, what do you mean? And I was like, well, they don't, nobody wants it. So I got to pack it up. And he said, no, everybody wants to meet you. They love the writing. So I had like 48 meetings scheduled. Everybody really liked the writing, which was, I, did, I didn't know it then. I now realize now it was a huge coup. But um, I was like, yeah, and? What am I supposed to do with that? Like, what, how, how's that going to pay my rent? Meetings. And he said, well, why don't you pitch something? And so I pitched what is now Bring It On. And I pitched terribly. I pitched off of pages. I went in. I was clumsy. I was awful. I had a lot of sweat. I had no AC in my car. I had to change shirts in the bathroom on the way in. I was mainlining Coca-Colas because I was like starving, <laughs> no money. Um, and I sold it. Um, you know, 27 no's, I think, and one yes. I pitched it 28 times. 27 no's, one yes. Uh, in fact, Universal, and another story, Universal passed in the room, and they ended up distributing it, and it's one of their biggest catalog sellers. So. You never know what's going to happen. So that's kind of my long story short. And then bring it on. I sold actually 10 years ago this month. So 10 years in the business. And <laughs> thank you. And I just hope I can be of service tonight. You know, any questions you have, we want to have fun. And, you know, whatever I have to share, I'll share it with you. I think what we're going to do is just have Jessica sort of launch into, I don't know if you guys got this lovely handout. Oh, yeah. Oh, the handout. Note. So like homework. We like visual aids. Um, so I think we're just going to launch in, and then I th at about the 45-minute mark, we're going to take questions. So if you guys have questions, just kind of hold on to them, write them down, whatever, and uh, and we'll we'll do questions. Do oh. you want to do the handout? I can't. Yes, I mean, the handout uh, should we do, should we do my other questions first that I answered on that oh, questionnaire? Okay, yeah. Just we, some of those. I was, I was given the like general questions that you're supposed to ask people, and so I went through it with Jessica. I was trying to get her yesterday to focus. To be serious. I was trying to get her to be serious, and there were some vodka sodas involved, and <laughs> seriousness was not happening.